All right, folks, uh, today we're going to do a little bit of atom tracing. We're going to be following atoms throughout the, the cycle. Um, so remember that what's going on here is we're taking two carbons in through acetyl-CoA, and we're losing them in two sequential steps throughout. So either one of those two carbons uh, that comes in is going to eventually be lost, right? Because we're two atoms in, two atoms out. We're carbon neutral in this cycle, right? So if you're running just on acetyl-CoA, everything is going to come in relatively uh, evenly, right? We're going to be coming in and out. So let's pretend that we have a carbon that's labeled here at carbon one of acetyl-CoA on the acetyl group. Uh, remember that what happens is this top carbon ends up with it. Ooh, I missed a OH, didn't I? Naughty Mauser. Oh, there we go. Um, that top carbon is the one by convention that we typically attach to it. Um, and so we would label that here. Uh, in the econotase step where we're isomerizing, it would still be at the top. Uh, we lose at this step CO2 at, at the side chain. So we haven't lost it yet. It's still at the top. Uh, at this second step, we lose the bottom CO2, okay? But pretty much that carbon one is gonna be carbon one all the way through the cycle. All right, so now round two. Round two, I'm gonna keep it in red, but I'm gonna square it. So now it's over here. Okay, um, now it has been folded over. Remember that that old carbon one uh, our, our oxaloacetate, which definitely needs a carbonyl group here, um, gets folded over. This is our old carbonyl. Okay. Um, now that guy gets folded over. So that's our top one. So that means we're going to lose it after one round. We haven't gone through a complete two rounds. So carbon one lost, or acetyl-CoA carbon one, after one round. Super easy, right? That's easy enough. You go through one full time, that one carbon would be used to generate uh, a full yield of uh, Krebs cycle, uh, but then it'd be lost. Now, carbon two is a lot different of a animal, okay? That guy is right here. It's not a spent carbon yet, which means it has to go through multiple rounds to fully spend it. Remember that we're losing all CO2s, which means that we've lost all hydrogens from these. And we have to pull off at least three hydrogens to make this thing work. We're gonna pull off one of them to attach. So here is our carbon label in green at carbon two. That's gonna follow here. And until it becomes a CO2, we're not gonna worry about losing it. So I'm just gonna keep tracing it. Tracing it. Tracing it. Ooh, now it's a carbonyl. Great. Okay, so it's we've lost a couple hydrogens from it. We lost one hydrogen to make it into citrate and another hydrogen we lost here at the malate dehydrogenase step. Okay, but we're not fully gone yet because we still have bonds to carbon that we need to get rid of. Okay, so I'm gonna trace it now. I'm gonna draw this as a little square, I suppose. Okay, um, that old one now is here. Not a CO2 yet, it's actually a CH2 again. Strangely enough, because we rearranged that molecule, right? We've moved a hydrogen back onto it. So we've scooched it down one. If you notice, uh, our, our green dot is now on top of the green square that I'm drawing. And now we're down here at CH2 after that one. Uh, I'm gonna draw a triangle. Stop. Great, now we're a at alpha keto. All right, I swear to God. Ooh, now we are a CO2. After three rounds, interestingly enough, uh, we are now a CO2, so we just gotta keep following it. Okay, now I'm gonna draw, I guess I'll do a star. That's gonna be easier to do. All right, we haven't lost it yet. We are about to lose it here after one, two, three, four, three full rounds of the Krebs cycle. Okay, so we would lose it at the alpha ketoglutarate step, C2 lost after three rounds. 
So be able to trace those carbons through. Not that difficult of a concept here, but uh, it is something that we have to keep in mind is that all of the carbons that come from, are in this cycle, at some point came from pyruvate or acetyl-CoA, uh, depending on if we had to do anaplerosis to fill the cycle. Or of course, there's other sources of filling. We could use amino acids and other things like that. But if you're using acetyl-CoA, chances are you're gonna see these labeled through multiple rounds. And so you're gonna see a single carbon with multiple chemical shifts if you were, for to example, put this into an NMR, right? And, and trace it through, okay? So that's kind of a, a simple video to show you where different things are gonna be lost. Acetyl-CoA's carbon-1 is going to be lost after a single round here at the isocitrate dehydrogenase step, and carbon-2 is going to be lost here after three rounds uh, at the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase step. Okay. Another thing I want to point out here is that we have three steps here that are irreversible or considered really irreversible. Citrate synthase, which is our flux, or essentially our influx control step. Uh, it's going to set the rate for the whole reaction. But of course, uh, once you've released a CO2 molecule, you need something like biotin in your enzyme to be able to put it back on. You need a carboxylase functionality. And so either one of these CO2s, you can't put the genie back in the bottle, right? So once you proceed through these, you're not going backwards. Um, and that's an, a really important thing uh, when we start to talk about some differences in uh, the pathway that non-mammals have that skip through these steps so that they can be uh, more conservative of, of carbon, especially in poor soils or situations where carbon is scarce. If you're living in a swamp or something, you might need to conserve as much carbon as possible, or you might need to use uh, to, make, to net generate sugars from fats that we can't do. Um, and so we'll talk about that. Um, and, and you should keep in mind how we trace atoms through something like that um, so we can net do gluconeogenesis. Okay. So keep that in mind how to trace carbons through the cycle.